today we are talking about dating for the over 50 crowd. That's right, and we have three of the power players in the dating world here in Chicago to help you with all the do's and don'ts of dating over 50. All right, so first we have Bella Gandhi, the owner of Smart Dating Academy. She's a dating coach who has helped hundreds of singles find their match with online dating. That's right, we also have Harlan Cohen, a New York Times bestselling author of five books on relationships. And Barbie Adler, founder of Selective Search, an elite matchmaking company who boasts an 87% success rate. And of course, we want to thank all three of them for being here. And we have a whole audience full of folks. What would a Dating Over 50 show be without some singles? Okay. Welcome to you all. She is in the audience with our singles, and she's talking to you on social media. So if you're at home and you're single and you're dating over 50, or you know someone who's over 50 and looking for love, make sure you send her all of your questions. So let's get to it. Good morning to all three of you. Good, Good morning. morning. I noticed something about this audience, and I'm going to ask you, uh, Barbie and Bella, a question in just a second. But do the three of you find it interesting that most of our audience is women? Is this a message? <laughs> like, there's no single men? I mean, there's one single. Are you a single guy? Yeah, one single guy in all <laughs> By the end of the show, he should have a date, right? By the end of the show. But is this, like, if you're a single woman and you're over 50 dating, is this what, like, you have slim pickings? They say right. yes. Right, and, and only ha about half of the audience is single, in fairness. The other half, I oh. think, it, are, are not. But that's okay. We're going to do okay. what we can for the ones that are single here. All right? All right, so what do you think about that? No, I think that there are plenty of great single men out there over the age of 50, and they are looking for age-appropriate women. They just, the shire, the good, a lot of the good guys tend to be at home. They're probably watching this on TV going, man, I should have gone to that audience. Right. No, they're out there. Okay. They're out All there. Right. Don't lose hope. All right. <laughs> okay. So, Bella and Barbie. Bella, you are a dating coach. Yes. Barbie, you do match, you do matchmaking. Yes. What's the biggest difference between a coach and a matchmaker? I'll start with you, Barbie. So my business, Selective Search, is based upon making sure that we take two quality individuals that are commitment-minded and going back to the basics of old-fashioned offline, getting to know both individuals and putting together a quality match that goes the distance. Mm. This is for people that are serious about finding love in their life and they want to do something proactive for their love life and they might be, the friends aren't getting it right, it's like science experiments between friends and family and they're really serious about finding the right person and they're doing something proactive for themselves. Okay, right. so there's necessarily not any coaching in that. And that's what you do, Bella, right? Is coaching? Yeah, you can think about a dating coach as a personal trainer for your love life. Mm. Someone who's going to look at your life overall. Do you have dating patterns? Do you have blind spots? Are you doing the same things over and over again? And then based on that, make a dating plan that's going to include some online dating and then meeting people in your real life and then using your own networks, your personal and your professional networks, to become your own matchmaker. Right. So we're kind of like the general consultants of your dating life. Right. I want to dive into both of those more, but first I want to get Harlan involved. Now, Harlan, you're a best-selling author. What is your general message to people looking for love? Uh, we are all so afraid of rejection, okay? I mean, mm -hmm. the reason there aren't a lot of men here is because they're scared to death, and women don't get this, okay? Yeah. They are so afraid of strong, self-assured, independent women who smell good. It is dangerous, and women don't appreciate this, so the big message is we all have to be better at taking risks. We all all have to make it easier and if we can say what we think and do what we feel regardless of how old we are we can connect and the thing is when you're over 50 you have that many more doubts okay you don't feel as great about yourself and those same issues that you dealt with when you were a teenager and 20 something they're still there you're just better at hiding it hmm. do you think having that been said do you think if you're a, a single woman in the workplace or wherever and you want to ask out a man should you go ahead and do that so there's a difference women want to be approached it's one of the biggest excuses they say I want men to make the first move. And you know what? They can make a move, but if you're in the workplace, show you're interested, okay? If it's Thanksgiving, uh, say, you know, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Are you spending uh, the holidays with someone special? Because, oh my gosh, you are someone special. It's like, what? Oh, wait, say that? Say all of that? <laughs> well, I mean, if, also, if you're not going to get fired and sexual harassment <laughs> isn't an issue. But that's okay to say. You know what? Yeah, but you can, you can show you're interested. You show, it's, are you as interested? 
interesting as you are attractive, okay? But I also think it's about putting yourself in everyday examples. You're at Starbucks. Everyone has their head down in their technology devices. Look up, smile, show buying signals. Men are intimidated by women, and women go in clusters. And so they're not approachable because when there's a huddle of women, no guy's going to walk up to a huddle of women. So you have to make sure to say hi and show those buying signals, even with a smile. Or say, what time is it? Or, gosh, I like the Did shoes. you say buying signals? Buying signals. Buying signals. You have to show that you're available. Oh. Um, for it's, purchase. It's the same thing with... <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, not right, not <laughs> literally. It's even when, you know, it's false advertising when you go to a wedding and you have a date that's just a friend. No, you're a free agent. Don't make a false advertisement that you're coupled up. You should go there and work that wedding and mix and mingle and be your own personal recruiter. Kind of yeah. like don't take sand to the beach? Absolutely. <laughs> well, because then it's a false advertisement. Right. All right. I tell women all the time, if men aren't approaching you, chances are you don't look as approachable as you could. So like what they're saying, look up, smile, and let men know that you're safe, that you're going to smile and talk back to them, that they're not going to hit you if you, you know, you're not going right. to hit them, I guess, but, if they come up to you and say hello. But then they might talk back, and you might get excited, and then you'll get hurt again. And none of us wants to be hurt. Mm. Right. And it's that cycle. So you have to be great at having the emotional tolerance to be vulnerable. And take that risk that, fine, you might get rejected, but that's just one person. I might love peaches, but there might be someone that doesn't. It could be the ripest, juiciest peach, and I don't like peaches. So take the risk. It's a numbers game. And put yourself out there, as well as source your closest friends. And people that you know that are in good relationships, that you know that they won't be threatened by you also being single, and they have your best interests and all also want to introduce you to someone new. Mm, interesting. Okay. I think the big thing is that you have to keep trying. Right. I think it's so easy to give up after that first rejection. And get frustrated yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Lose your confidence. Well, yeah. let's go to G. G is in the yeah. audience. Who are you with, G? I am. I'm here with Jenny Clark. Hi, Jenny. Hi, And tell you? us your story. You're gorgeous. Thank You're you. single? I am single. Well, tell us your story. <laughs> I've been divorced twice. I'm a single mom. I just sent my son off to college. I'm an executive recruiter. I'm an author of a book. Wow. Um, so I'm fairly accomplished. And and one of my problems is men seem intimidated by me. Oh. I'm also 6'1". Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm on a step right now. That's why I'm as tall as Jenny. No, and I actually have a question because you are 6'1". Are you, will you, would you date a man shorter than you? I would absolutely date a man shorter than me. Okay. Mm. Nice. Okay, and Barbie, you coached Jenny. Yes, I did. Okay, and what did you do with Jenny? Well, look at her. She's beautiful. She's the whole package. She's really a great example of a modern-day woman who has it all going on. And she has learned um, through realizing what patterns she's made that have not done her well that she used to be a rescuer. So she's a former rescuer. So she used to go for the wounded birds. Yes. And so she knows and she believes now in herself that she be believes in having a partner, not a passenger and someone that brings just as much to the table as you do. And what I call it is, um, again, it's the marriage-minded, not mattress-minded, and someone that is selectively single and that really is okay with being single. And I applaud you for that because the worst mistake is merging your life with someone else that makes you, unfortunately, go into the divorce statistics where it ends um, not the right way. So Ginny is the full package, and so some of the coaching advice I gave her was her parents had a beautiful marriage and was a great role model for love. And so I, I recommended that she channels that relationship. And while it wasn't perfect, it was beautiful and something she could channel and realize that even though she's looking for someone that is successful and part material, it doesn't have to be net worth toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It might be someone, since you're on a spiritual path, that you have the spirituality in common. So you're bridging your interest with him. It might not be a Wall Street guy, but realizing you bring, you don't need a man for money, and that's true these days with more and more women with advanced degrees and, sure. and being out there in the Is career. that like lowering your standards, though, or no? If you, don't, if you don't date a man who has the same, does that mean like she's lowering her standards if she doesn't get that well, see, that's Wall Street I'm guy? I'm just saying that she's not because it's like going to the picnic. You're already bringing the strawberries. Why do you need someone else to bring the strawberries? She okay. brings that to the table. Mm -hmm. As long as someone's not utilizing her for that reason, if someone is stirring your soul and having stimulating intellectual conversations, maybe he's in a creative field where it's just not the same income level um, to explore that as well as... Ginny is an executive search, and I want you to use your trust and intuition and what you do so great in your professional life and use that for your own magic in your personal life. Now, okay. Jenny, is this going to change the way you approach men or who you give a chance to? 
Yeah, I think it, I think it will. I think I'm seeing more clearly now, especially since my son is gone, and he's he's really excited about me getting out there now. So yeah, in fact, he signed me up for Match.com, which I rejected. But you know. I want to I want to go over some of the the do's and don'ts for each of you. I know Harlan, you say that uh, some women tell lies to themselves, and that's clearly a don't. Oh, yeah. You have to, I call it looking in the mirror in your thong, okay? It's an ugly metaphor, okay? But it's looking in the mirror. If you can't say what you think and if you can't do what you feel, ask yourself, is it because I'm not attractive enough? Is it that I'm not interesting enough? Is that I'm not emotionally sound enough? And make those changes so that you have the tolerance to handle the truth. Right. Well, when you say you're not attractive enough, you feel like you're not attractive enough, how do you make that change? You're saying go to the gym, do the things okay. that you can do? I've always, my belly. I hate taking my shirt off. When I was 13, I cried when I took my shirt off, okay? I, I feel ugly, okay? I go to the gym three times a week. I go to this fit body place because I want to have abs and make me feel good. I'm married, okay? Right. But I want to feel my best at all times so that I know I'm putting out my best. So when you look in the mirror, you have to know I'm hot. I'm interesting. I'm dynamic. Or otherwise, you're going to be too afraid someone's going to discover the truth. Mm. Okay, so do you like your belly now? I'm working. I've, it's a two... <laughs> I've you got to take your shirt off here. You can. I got a one and a half pack. Okay. You gotta, but your wife is not complaining, right? Oh, she loves it. She loves it because I'm always working to be better, and I think that's right. the magic in being that's in a relationship. Attractive. Yeah. Bella, we haven't gotten to hear from you on that, on the do's and don'ts. Yeah, one of the worst things is having beliefs, I call them mind monkeys, that keep you stuck. And it's very much along the same path. I mean, if you're thinking, I'm too old, men only want women that are much younger because I'm over 50, mm -hmm. I'm not attractive enough, bad thoughts lead to bad feelings. Bad feelings lead to bad actions. So if you're thinking, I'm not attractive enough, there's no guys, what are you going to feel? You're going to feel bad. You're going to feel kind of hunched over. You're going to look down. You're certainly not going to feel approachable. And then what do you do? You do nothing. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that we make is having these killer beliefs. Right. And I also think it's about putting your best foot forward like you just touched on and not feeling the sense of urgency to go back out a second you're single and go out and approach people. Take a temperature read. Emotionally heal. It hurts. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, usually a deep wound the first time you fall in love, and then people are so guarded. But make sure that emotionally you're at your best, physically you're at your best, before you go out there and date. And if you think about it a little bit like a job interview, you wouldn't overshare a job interview about how much you hate working or your work ethic. You want to be happy. Men love confidence, warmth, and happy. They don't want to hear about anything negative. Yeah, right. So minimize the negative and accentuate whatever you feel is your positive attributes and smile yeah. and be warm, feminine, open. Sounds good, Barbie. Thank you. I don't know. No, no. we got a whole lot more to go. We're just getting warmed up around here. Coming up next is the Know Your Neighbors game. But later, we show you how to spruce up your online dating profile and we play the Match Me game. Will someone find love today here on Windy City Live? You never know. But first, here is one of our singles in the audience. Hi, I'm Martha Canty from Oak Forest, and I am single and ready to mingle. I can do over 50 or 60. <laughs>